Hailing from the great cold state of Alaska, I am the Frozen Gamer, and today I want to talk about Animal Crossing, just over a month after its release. Joining me again is the loveliest guest on the planet. Having recently gained the ability to terraform in Animal Crossing, her first task upon doing so was to bore a hole to discover the power that will not only make it possible to keep playing Animal Crossing without getting tired, but she has already used Balefire to destroy every egg and soon sea bass in the game. That is, of course, my lovely wife. Yes, and I am waiting for what's his name, Zippy, to come along so I can Balefire him too. <laughs> this freaky bunny. <laughs> Well, I thought you already did, and that's the reason why he's gone. Well, you said that I only bail-fired the eggs. <laughs> well, either way. So today, of course, as I mentioned before, we're going to be talking about Animal Crossing. Now we've had over a month with the game, and uh, we both recently gained the ability to terraform, so um, we're just going to talk about all of our impressions with the game. Uh, well, I guess maybe not so much impressions, but just our thoughts overall of what we think of the game. Uh, we're going to talk about things that we like, things that we don't like, and some things that we would like to see improved. So um, let's go ahead and start off with the things that we like about the game. All right. Well, the uh, very first thing that I have on my list is uh, customizing and decorating my house. That is uh, one of my favorite things to do right now. It's a huge improvement over New Leaf because then I felt like I was just waiting, hoping I'd get um, furniture to buy that went together. Mm -hmm. And now I'll uh, be able to build my own furniture and I feel like they have a lot more just fun stuff for sale. I've been able to really work on my house. Um, I've been able to upgrade my house so that I have the main room and then three smaller rooms. So um, I can make each room its own thing. Like my main room is a kitchen and then I have a little sitting room a bedroom and a bathroom and it's been a lot of fun uh, one of my favorite things to do you know i actually have to say that decorating the inside of my house has been in some ways the bane of my existence <laughs> and it's mostly just because of how hard it is to get certain kinds of furniture and um i guess like for one i'd really like to have some good counter type surfaces that I could use for for putting stuff down and I found like a a foldable table or well you know what would be foldable in real life anyway and put down an espresso maker and a, a, a manual a coffee grinder which are both great but um, I just kind of wish that there were a few more options with things like that and I just kind of feel like it's very slow going, and I guess to some degree that's always been the case. I mean, it was the case in New Leaf too, but at the same time, it's also one of those things where I kind of wish it was easier to get uh, certain types of furniture, or that like the one uh, recipe that we have for uh, whatever it is, that thing that has like a, a countertop with a sink or whatever. Yeah, it's like a kitchenette or something. Yeah, some, some type of kitchenette and you, you need to have an ironwood shelf recipe, but or, or no, ironwood dresser maybe is what it is. Anyway, point is is that it's a recipe that a DIY recipe that is extremely rare. Yeah, neither one of us have gotten that. Yeah, I will agree. Um, some of it's slow going. Uh, for me, I just started collecting different things mm -hmm. like oh this can be for a kitchen whenever I make a kitchen and this can yeah. be for a bathroom so I collected a lot of different furniture and yeah I do agree I wish that there was like a recipe to build an actual countertop or you could buy an actual countertop um, what I ended up doing was just making a bunch of those wooden mini tables and putting them all in the row to make a sort of counter so I could put all my stuff on which works, but yeah, I mean, a countertop would be, like, really cool to do, but they yeah. don't seem to have anything like that, so I just did what, for now, seems to be the next best thing. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I do think that there are definitely good things about decorating, and, like, mine is starting to come together a little bit here and there. It's just, I, I still feel like there's so much more I want in there. And the one thing that I really am missing at the moment is, um, and I guess, I guess this conversation is going to kind of go all over the place, not just, like, only talking about things we like, so 
I'll just make that clear right now, because I think that we're just going to kind of let the conversation flow naturally. But um, one of my things is that I really wish those Nintendo items were there. And yeah. so far there's no Nintendo-themed items. And I, I mean, I'm guessing at some point down the line those will come. I'm just not really sure how they're going to work that out, because I know that, I mean, with, with New Leaf... Um, you would you'd be able to buy the items with play coins, which you got by carrying around your 3DS with you, and it would like build up play coins as you walked. Um, but of course, the Switch doesn't have anything like that, so I'm not really sure what exactly they'll do. Um, I guess they could probably do it with Miles. Now That's that what I, think I was about thinking. It. Maybe I don't know. Maybe one of their updates sometime they'll do it as a new thing to buy with your uh, your Miles, and maybe it'll just be like. A mystery Nintendo thing, so you like get it, not knowing what you're getting. Well, yeah, that, that's what it always was before. Yeah, too, so, so I was just thinking they could they could keep that because yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. I I think I finally got a basement in my house in New Leaf, and I just put all my Nintendo stuff there. I remember in New Leaf, um, there was some kind of furniture that you could only get on Tortimer's mm -hmm. Island. Um, it was like. Island theme furniture. Yeah. I don't know what they called it. Mm -hmm. And of course, that was my favorite, so I wanted my bedroom to be of that theme. And it was mm -hmm. so hard to get what I needed mm -hmm. to get the complete set. And so, in that regard, I think it's a little easier to at least get stuff that I like. I'm not trying to do like all the pieces of furniture in one theme because that's just yeah more frustrating. But, uh,. It's, it's more fun. Like, my the last game, it wasn't as much fun to customize my house because it felt like I was just... Everything was just pushed into a corner and it looked terrible until yeah. I finally could kind of situate it. And this one, there's way more storage space. So, yeah, that helps um, a lot. And, and each room you upgrade, you get more storage space. Yeah. Um, so in that regard, you can be like, oh, I'll save this for a future thing or I might use this in my house. But you can put it in storage so it's not just... Your house doesn't look like it's just a hoarder's nest. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, and I, I will say one thing that I I definitely like. I'm mean, besides the storage, like you mentioned, I do I do like the how easy it is to move things around compared to previous games. Yes, it's uh, so much easier. And I mean, obviously, we knew this was going to be a feature because we saw, you know, in the um, the reveal trailer and everything. But it's still just it's very nice. It saves a lot of time and effort and. Granted, for me, I, I will definitely say there's not a whole lot of situations where I'm taking the time to do that because it's rare that I pick up furniture. Um, but when I do and I want to put something down, I can. And I do like the fact, and I, I can't remember if New Leaf had this, but the fact that you can actually put things on, like, table surfaces and that sort of thing. Yeah, I don't. I honestly don't remember if New Leaf had that I, either. I'd have, to, I'd have to look that up, or, I mean, you know, pull out, pull out my 3DS again and... and try it out, but I, I don't think you could, and I could be totally wrong about that. I mean, I'll, I'll probably put a note in the video whether or not whether or not that's a thing. Um, but it's just something that I notice more because it's like, okay, you know, I don't have to put, like, the switch you get doesn't have to go on the floor. You know, you can put it on a desktop of, of some kind um, or, you know, radio or what have you. Um, speaking of radio... I, one of the things that I, I do like, which I don't think was in New Leaf, is that you can get a variety of different songs, like uh, different KK Slider songs, and then you can um, register them with like a radio or a CD player or a record player so that you can always have those songs available to listen to when you're in your, your yeah, house. Yeah, yeah, and, and anywhere you... You put um, yeah. a radio. I put one up. I mean, I never go up there, but I have like this little seating area by um, uh, the little pond that, um, like, where the the river starts. Um, and so I have a bench up there to sit on, and then I have a little radio next to that. But anyway, the point is that yeah, if you um, you're uh, anywhere you have a radio or you know anything that plays music, we'll keep all your songs on there, and you can put them on. Uh, shuffle, so it just mm -hmm. kind of goes through them. I need to get some more songs. I think I have five. Yeah, if that <laughs> four or like five. Too. I haven't. I, I haven't remember. gotten a whole lot of them yet. Yeah, but I mean, it's just a little thing, and like for the most part, I don't even really listen to them. It's more just kind of. It's a cool, cool thing, you know, a variety of different 
uh, tunes, and at the end, um, or I mean, after after you after KK Slider comes to your island, you get um, the song, which is basically just the main theme of New Horizons. Yeah. And so that's pretty cool to have that there um, as an option for something to play. And you can set it on shuffle, so it can just be on all the time, which is what I typically do on the, you know, few occasions that I'm actually in the house. Um, but yeah. Um, other stuff that I like, I really, really like the terraforming. Um, it's something that I, I found, it, it's been really fun to mess around with, with well, you know, messing around with both, like, the cliffs and then also messing around with, um, the, le the, the ground around, like, water and stuff, and being able to, you can make up, I mean, you know, you can, you can make rivers, you can make waterfalls, you can, um, you know, break things up, break up cliffs so that you can add paths and stuff. First thing I did on my game, after I got the ability to modify cliffs, was I made it so that there's a path directly back to the rear beach on the island, because that's one thing that I I always hated how much of a pain in the butt it was to get there. <laughs> yeah. Because you, you had to climb up the cliff, which was, and you had to climb like two or three layers of the cliff, and then climb back down in the back. And you had to get to, you know, a specific spot in order to do it, so I just cleared a path there, and now I can walk directly to it, and I cleared paths behind the cliffs as well, so that I can get there from any side of the island. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't done a lot with the terraforming. I need to work on that more. I think if, as I get into it, I'll enjoy it more. Um, but yeah, I just did a small section just to like try it out, and it was at a time when I really didn't have a lot of time to work on it. And um, yeah, I haven't done a whole lot with that yet. Um, I did do um, a tiny little... I mean, I, I used one of my pathways and made like a little stone thing underneath the fountain and that's basically all I did. I need to make some paths like between my plaza and uh, the houses and stuff but I have a feeling because I have a harder time envisioning that sort of thing um, that I'll be doing like I'll try it one way and then I'll be redoing and uh, like yeah I'll be redoing it a lot probably before yeah. I get it to where I like it so I haven't really uh, started with that yet. Yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing as I go, is, is I I start by doing kind of like a, a basic idea of what I want, and then as I go, if I need to, I make modifications. The only thing I don't like about the terraforming is that there's only one button to do everything. It's just the A button for each thing. So, like, um, as an example, um, you, you know, depending on which angle you're at, you either... You either break off a piece of ground, you um, cut a corner off so that it's like at an angle, or you scoop up dirt to create more ground. And that's that's great f at times, but like if you're trying to break ground and then you accidentally make more, or you're trying to um, make more and then you actually accidentally break it, it's just it's annoying. Yeah, like I said, I haven't done a whole lot with that yet, so I'll have a better opinion of if I like um, having one button for everything or not when I get more into it. Yeah. Um, something else that I wanted to bring up was um, with things I like. I think overall I do like the Nook Miles. I like the fact that you can earn miles for doing just about anything. Yeah. Um. There are some things where it's kind of like some some situations where I definitely find myself getting a little more frustrated with the requirements, particularly the uh, what's it called um, the perfect fishing thing. What's it called? I think it's called Angle Master. Or yeah, something, something, like, something that. like that. Angle Master or Cast Master, whatever Cast it is. Cast Master, I think would yeah probably make more sense. So the main main thing I find frustrating about that is that. In order to completely fill it out, you have to get a hundred time. You have to catch a hundred fish in a row, and if you accidentally press A too early, and the fish swims away, or if you catch a fish's attention and then pull your hook when after you caught their attention, then 
your account resets, and so you have to. If you it, basically, if you mess up at all, you have to go back and do stuff over again, which I just find annoying. Yeah, I mean, I I looked at it as like a challenge. It only goes up to a hundred. Um, that was one of the ones that I kind of focused on earlier. Which of course, um, I uh, I was working on that, and I was towards the end of it during the whole bunny day thing, and so it got super annoying because then I was just catching a bunch of eggs, which did not count towards my fish. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, no, not another stupid egg. Yeah. But yeah, I'm not, like, in the beginning of the game when you could get miles all the time because it was, like, a low count to get the first stamp on something, mm -hmm. you know, picking up miles left and right. And so I was really focusing on doing stuff to get miles. And now it's more like, okay, I'm playing the game, I'm focusing on stuff that I want to work on, and then, hey, cool, look, I just earned some miles instead of focusing more on getting those miles. But yeah. now, but that's mostly because now it's, like, taking a lot more to get the next stamp. Yeah, well... And I, uh, to be clear, I'm not. I'm not saying that necessarily. In general, I'm doing that. It's just more like the cast master thing. You know, every time I I make a little mistake because I accidentally, you know, pull back my line too soon, or I didn't realize that I caught a fish's attention, and so I pull back my line. Um, or if I'm a little bit late, then I get it reset. And is I, I wish that it would be more along the lines of. Once you reach a certain point, it keeps your count at that stamp amount. So, like, you know, since I've gotten 50 in a row, keeping the amount at 50 and then using that as my baseline, and I basically have to get another 50 oh, or whatever Oh, okay, I see what is. you're saying. Yeah, that could be a, a good improvement. But, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's one of those things, and it's probably more me just complaining over nothing. Because, I mean, it really doesn't actually matter. It's just more that it... It's kind of me looking at it as I'm having to restart each time, and that's that's the annoying part. And it, you know, half the time it's not even necessarily that I. I mean, I don't know. I guess I guess it is really my mistake. Obviously, you know, I'm the one who's pulling back my line too soon, or or you know, waiting too long to press A, whatever it happens to be. But it's still just kind of annoying having to restart my progress on that particular thing because I want to be able to fish without having to think about making sure that I'm catching these fish. Yeah. And that, I think that's the main thing is it just kind of... It's one of those things that's always bugged me. It, it bugged me a lot in, in Destiny as well, you know, having the same thing like when I was working on certain quests and I'd be... It, every time I die, it would hurt my progress. You know, like my, I, my progress would go backwards and I, you know... I remember there was one quest where I was, like, getting up to... I got up to, like, 15% in a single match, and then the next match, I got killed a bunch of times and lost all my progress, or, you know, what have you, and it's just... It's really frustrating to have to start over again constantly because of these mistakes. And some sometimes it's easier to, to get the cast just right than others, and anyway. Enough about that. Um... But more stuff that you like. Um, another thing I really like is the museum. Um, it's gorgeous, I think. Um, of course, I was excited um, the first time we got to see a little bit of a teaser in one of the trailers. And now that I've been playing the game more and have gotten um, a lot of different creatures, uh, you know, fish and bugs and everything, um, it's it's filled up more. I don't I don't tour my museum very often so that when I do it's like oh now there's you know these tanks have fish in it and this area has more bugs in it and it's just a lot of fun to go through it's really pretty it's like going through um, like an actual aquarium or um, like uh, what do they call it uh, the butterfly sanctuary things whatever they call those I don't know it's just it's really fun um, the animation is great the graphics are great um, and when you I look at the little um, plaques that say like what's at a certain area it'll follow um, like that fish you can see it in the tank yeah. and, and everything um, when I showed it to the boys they were just uh, they loved watching it yeah <laughs> like fish fish butterflies <laughs> yeah they uh, they love that so sometimes when I'm just like you know what I'm just gonna do something a little even more relaxing 
I just mosey through my museum and uh, it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the museum, but I don't, I don't like going through as much right now because there's just so much empty space in there. It's like so many spots that are, you know, like tank, fish tanks that are empty and, um, you know, like not a lot of bugs and things like that. And I'm, I'm sure that probably the amount of stuff each of us has is pretty similar. I'm going to guess it is. Um, since we probably put roughly about the same amount of time into the game so far. Um, and I think I checked earlier today, I, I'm pretty sure it said I was at like 60 hours. Yeah, I forgot so to check. I should have done that and I forgot. I haven't played nearly as much as as I thought I would. Um, mostly just because I've, you know, been playing other stuff too, but... Um, yeah. And speaking of getting fish and bugs... Um, I have to say that I'm a little disappointed at how little variety there is at the moment. And I know that, like, today we, we got some new stuff, and you know, I've been able to catch a few new things. Okay, but I've only got one new thing today. I haven't seen anything new I think I've gotten, like, yet. one new fish and one new bug so Okay, far. yeah, the only new thing I got was, um, what was it called, a, a water skater? Yeah. Um, that was the only new thing that I saw, but I only played for, like, um, maybe an hour today, and I, that was broken up, too. Yeah. But I, I guess it's just, I kind of feel like I'm tired of getting the same things all the time, and it's always, almost always the stuff that's worth almost nothing. Well, yeah, that's why they're worth almost nothing, because <laughs> they're very common. Yeah, and it's just like, uh, it's making me miss Tortimer's Island, because even though Tortimer's Island was in some ways kind of broken because of how easy it was to get a bunch of really valuable stuff, there was all, it was just the fact that you could actually get valuable stuff. And he, and you know, with the way things are set up now, including the actual like islands you can go to, which we'll get into in a little bit, um, there's just not a whole lot you can get. And I, it kind of gets annoying trying to find ways to earn bells. And I mean, I've, I've managed to earn enough bells to where I built like four or five bridges and a ramp um and then of course i've upgraded my house a few times um working on paying off the the one that was i think 748,000 bells or 698 whatever it yeah, was yeah that's the one i'm working on now too um but i don't know i just i feel like at times it gets a little boring just getting the same things all the time and the one thing about Tortimer's Island is that it did provide more variety of things you could catch. Yeah, I will agree there, with there that. There was a much wider variety of stuff. And I, I realize that probably a big part of that is because of the fact that Tortimer's Island, it was always a tropical climate, so you'd always have, like, the summer bugs and fish and everything. Whereas, uh, with the way they have the island set up now, it's always the same season on those islands as your island. Yeah. Um... And so we can kind of go into that a little bit, unless you want you had more to say about the the variety on our island. No, uh, yeah, I definitely had the mystery tours as something they can improve on. Um, I kind of thought or hoped that it'd be set up like Tornimer's Island, where it would be a different season than your island. So when you went there, like part of the incentive to go there was the chance to get other things that aren't on your island. Yeah. And the only different island I've been to was um, um, a bamboo island. So all the, the trees on it were just bamboo um, plants. Mm -hmm. So you can get a lot of those, which right. was fun. It was a different island, but like everything else, it's like basically the exact same, just set up in a little different pattern. Um, so you get the same bugs and fish that you get on your island. Uh, with me, I have not been to an island that had any different fruit than my island, which yeah. I find annoying because I really want to get all the different types of fruit, and it yeah. seems like you have to just have friends with this game that have different native fruits. Yeah. Um, the only new fruit I got, I got coconuts because all the palm trees on the island you go to have coconuts. Yeah. And I got oranges from you because you have that as your native fruit and I have apples as my native fruit. But that part I find annoying. Um, I really think they could improve the mystery tours to make them 
there to be more incentive to go because I've kind of stopped going as yeah. much. Um, I think the times I've gone the most is if I'm needing some resources and it's just easier to go to an island or if I especially need like uh, more clay or something. It seems like I don't use it a lot, but when I need it, then I don't have it. Yeah. And it seems like more rocks drop clay from the other islands than my island. I don't know. I might be mm. off on that, but... Um, so then I'll go to an island, get all the resources, and go back home. But yeah, it's... Uh, they could do more. They yeah. definitely could do more. Yeah, I just... I, I don't like the fact that those those remote islands don't have anything different. And, I mean, it's like like you said, you know, like occasionally you can... You'll end up on an island with bamboo instead of trees. And, or, and you know, it's like, okay, that's a great way to gra gather bamboo, but I want something I can sell. And to me, that's kind of the whole point of going to the island is to get stuff you can sell... Or to, you know, get a couple of resources that you might not be able to get on your island, like, especially stuff from rocks. Yeah. Um, but it's just, I find those islands, they have absolutely nothing that I can't get on my own island. Yeah. Or wouldn't it be cool if you went to a money tree island? <laughs> right? Yeah. E it's, like, it's like as rare as um, a tarantula island, but you still, like, go to one and there's, like, you know, just a bunch of trees with bells on them. Hey, I have 500,000 bells now. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do like the money trees though. That's, oh, that's you know, a, that's, that's a, a lot pretty of cool fun. thing. Um, I plant a new one every day, so that yeah. um, usually I think sometimes I miss a day or something, and I'm honestly not sure how long. I think it takes three or four days for them to grow. Yeah, but uh, usually one once a day I can get a money tree, which is fun. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely a, a nice little feature there. I, I still obviously haven't gotten a tree with the uh, three bags of 99,000 No, bells, I haven't but... either. It's probably just as rare as the Tarantula Island, which I don't know if it's like a bug in the game or just an actual like very super rare might happen. I, I think it's just a super rare thing. I think that's all it is. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think that that's a, a neat little feature. I mean, I, I don't know if it existed in previous games. I'm guessing it probably The money did. tree, I think... I want to say it exists in New Leaf, and I don't know why I didn't do it. I want to say it was a thing, but I don't know how it was different from this game, because I never did it. Yeah, I don't ever remember there being glowing and actually, spots. Actually, I think what it was... No, there wasn't gl glowing spots. I think it was that everything in New Leaf was marked by the regular X that you find fossils. Mm -hmm. You'd have one hole that you would fall into if you didn't dig it up, which they don't have in this game, and I'm glad, because that just got annoying. Yeah. And I think one... <sighs> Maybe you dug up bells, and or maybe it was a thing that you could plant bells, and it was like a, it wasn't guaranteed to grow. Yeah. I don't remember. It was like something you could do, but I think it was something that wasn't guaranteed, which is probably why I never did it. Yeah. Because it's like either you could grow more bells, or you just lost some type of a thing. Yeah. So at least with this, you're guaranteed to at least get. Um. I mean, I always do the ten thousand bells because that's the max you can get to get a profit but like no anything 10,000 or less you're guaranteed to get at least three bags with that amount in it yeah um, which is very nice yeah so other things um, okay I kind of touched on this with um, doing my house but the the DIYs and um, being able to put things outside which kind of go hand in hand but um, I'm, I am enjoying the DIYs mm -hmm. um, usually when I get a new recipe I'll look at it and it'll be there a Hey, that looks kind of cool. Maybe I'll do that, or well, I'll keep it and maybe someday. Yeah, I mean, it's like some of the things I've I've gotten DIY recipes for. I'm like, yeah, I don't think I'll do that. And then other ones are pretty cool. But it's just it's been fun. Um, some days I'll more like, hey, I had to think, look at resources and see what I can build. Um, I like the um, the hot items at uh, Nook's Cranny that they buy yeah. from you because um, then you can build other things that maybe you wouldn't necessarily, or at least I don't necessarily want to just put somewhere on my island or have in my house and then I can sell them and that's definitely one way to get a large amount of bells. I love the fact that you can decorate outside because, you know, then I can have more incentive to build more things mm -hmm. and put them around my island and just um, kind of make it more homey, make, do things that you would do in real life, you yeah. know. Um, so that's, that's a lot of fun. So that's, that's definitely something, and that was something I was looking forward to when I saw it in the game, because it was something that you could do in um, 
uh, Stardew Valley, which was um, a game I played like last year, I think. And it had some different recipes in it. A little bit different, but it was the same sort of thing. You would collect different things on the map and then you could do like um, build different things or whatever. Anyway, it was it was a fun aspect to the game and uh, I'm, I'm glad that they put that in in uh, New Horizons, just a new feature. I'm having fun with it. Yeah, I, I like the DIY stuff for the most part. Um, the only thing I don't like about it is that 99% of the time that I get DIY recipes there for things that I have no interest in making. <laughs> There's also those. Sometimes it'll be like, I'm never going to make that, and then it'll be a hot item. It's like, oh cool, now I can build that just to say yeah, I built it and then right. I sell it. Yeah, and that can definitely be convenient sometimes with the hot items, if, especially if you have like an abundance of certain materials and... I haven't been, like, gathering wood as much lately, but for a while there I was, you know, going to every tree in my island and getting all the wood I could, and now I'm just kind of like, I, I don't play enough to where, or I, I don't play enough hours in the day to where I feel like taking the time to go to each tree and knock yeah. everything out and then, you know, run away if, if the, the bee's nest drops yeah. <laughs> and, or, or, you know, try to get the net out quickly enough to catch the... Uh, hornets, I guess, is really what they are, but... Um, or wasps. Yeah, yeah they're wasps. wasps. Um, yeah, I haven't been that meticulous. Sometimes if I just feel like doing it, sometimes I'll get, I'll get materials. Other times it comes down to more of, oh, hey, I need this certain kind of wood to build this that I want to build, right. so I'm going to go around collecting uh, materials. Um, I inevitably yeah. have way more softwood than anything else. <laughs> it yeah. seems like I don't build enough with softwood or something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, like, one thing I've found is that, in general, I don't really spend a lot of time gathering materials anymore, except except for, like, hitting rocks, because, you know, there will usually be one of them that has money in it. Um, but, uh, you know, there's just so many trees on the island that it's, like, it takes way too long to do all that, and I'd rather just spend time trying to get stuff to earn money. And unless I need wood for a recipe, the, for a high-value item, there's not a whole lot of incentive. Yeah. And um, like you were saying, or like we were talking about before, with the um, with the the tours, whatever you call them, the uh, the ones that take you to a random island. Um, I I was hoping that there would be a little more variety to the islands too. And and I mean I, I'm not just talking about in terms of what you can catch and everything. I just mean like layouts and you know at least something that would, that would differentiate them from your own island right and i think i've heard from other people that i think i've heard someone say that they're they've gone yeah. they've seen like one island that had a different native fruit than what they had and otherwise it's always been exactly the same and um i don't know i think i think that's something that they should try to change in a future update and maybe they will i, I really hope so yeah um, something else that I like better in this game um, is how easy it is to change your look. Um, oh yeah, definitely. You can um, you know, save your clothes in your storage and then you can get um, either a changing room or just a dresser or whatever and uh, change your look and then you can get a vanity with a mirror or just a mirror and uh, change like your hairstyle or whatever, mm -hmm. which is way easier because the last game uh, you had to wait until the hair salon was available, and then I think you could only do it, like, once a day. And, of course, it cost money. Yeah. And you didn't see the finished product until it was done, and sometimes it was like, okay, and other times, like, I'm definitely coming back tomorrow, because I don't like that. But, um, yeah, yeah it's, it's just way easier. It's a lot of fun. Um, yeah. There, for a while, I was doing weird hair colors that was annoying my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I don't yeah. do that in real life, so I was like, hey, I'll do it virtually because it's easy to change. <laughs> yeah, I just, I didn't really want to uh, think of you as, as being one of the typical people that has, like, blue hair and that sort of thing because they're crazy. Yeah, well, like I and said, I don't, crazy. I, I don't do it in real life, so it's more fun to do it virtually because it's so easy to change it if it's like, well, that was fun for an hour, now I'm going back, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Can't quite do that in real life. Okay, Ramona Flowers. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Dude, I change my hair every 10 days. Get used to it. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
yeah, I, I do like I do like the customization with that, and um, I like the fact that they finally have a facial hair option because I like having a beard because I have a beard, and um, yeah, I mean. It, I ended up having to do a little bit of time traveling back and forth to get the beard to show up in the Able Sisters shop. Um, but once I got it, I, I haven't taken it off. The one thing that I will say, though, about the Able Sisters shop is I feel like there's never anything that is um, something I'd ever want to wear. <laughs> yeah, I think I could be wrong because I'm obviously only playing as a female, but I think they have more stuff geared to females than males, they seem or it's to, just in more general. fun stuff to do as a female but, character. Yeah, I mean, it's it's. I there have been times where there have been you know more male oriented clothing, but it's just never anything where I'm like I have any interest in grabbing that. Um, speaking of clothing, though, the the ability to make custom design clothing, um, I found. It leaves a lot to be desired, mostly just because I haven't really figured out how to do it quite right. I think it's cool that it exists um, for people who are more creative than I, and I'm sure that there are some great designs out there, but every time I've tried to do something, it just it doesn't come out the way I want it to come out, and so I just gave up trying. Yeah, I haven't actually tried that because I haven't come up with an idea of what to do, because um, that's definitely not my forte, so I haven't yeah. even attempted anything yet so i don't i don't know how it would work for me yeah that reminds me though um we should mention what the names of our islands are oh yes mine is isle samara it comes from um a random island in the wheel of time world um it's not even part of the story but it's one of the sea folk islands and i thought that'd be kind of fun to um just pick an island name from that series because I love Wheel of Time. Yeah. And mine is Strong Daddia. So for any of you who are actually familiar with Strong Bad from back in the day, I mean, I guess they still make some content, but it was more kind of a bigger thing in the early 2000s. Um, I've always been a fan, hence the reason our cat's name is The Cheat. Um, but yes, I my island's name is Strong Daddia, and I have the Strong Badian flag, and I have not figured out the notes for doing the Strong Badian National Anthem as the island tune, but maybe someday I'll figure that out or try again to see if I can find chords for it or whatever to give me an idea of what it should be. Yeah, I, uh, I have, I still need to have you walk me through again how to download images, but, um, I sort of did a customized flag for the... Um, again, from Wheel of Time, the ancient Aes Sedai symbol, which came out okay. There's definitely... it's, it's not perfect. Um, I haven't done my theme song yet. Um, I'm thinking of doing it. There's a very simple tune from um, uh, a YouTube channel that I listen to that does Wheel of Time content, and I'm thinking of doing it because of a very simple tune. I'll have to change it again next year when the TV show comes out <laughs> yeah. um, and see if I can do some of those notes if it's not too complicated, because that'd yeah. be fun. Definitely. Um, oh, let's see here. Is there, you have anything else on your list of stuff you like? Oh, uh, one more thing is just uh, some of the extra tasks, like if for some reason one day you want to play and you're like, I don't know what I really want to do in my game. So you go to, um, you go to Nook. And you say, what should I do? And he'll tell you something. And um, some of the things he gives you to do are fun. Like, I mean, I've only done it a few times because usually I know what I want to do in my game each day. Um, some of the things was like, as far as like, buy land so more people can move here. I'm like, I don't want more people to move to my island. But then other things like when you are first trying to sell land and you have to um, do some of the DIY um, items um, for each plot of land he was trying to sell. I think there was three of them. That was fun. I thought that was, like, kind of cool, a little different. Um, and, uh, what was another one? Oh, just, um, like, do, creating more, or crafting more objects to put around the island to make it more, um, I don't know, look better or something. It was kind of fun. I didn't like the whole, let's just sell a plot of land because you have to actually give him money 
to sell land, which didn't make any sense, and I didn't want more islanders on my island. But anyway, um, one of the things that I thought was fun was uh, right now it's the nature day slash May Day thing, which is an extra, but it's like um, just little things that doesn't get in your way of day-to-day -day island whatever you're doing. Um, there's one thing a day that you can earn extra miles, and then uh, today started the um, the May Day tour, uh, which you just go to Nook, and he says, oh, I left a tour ticket at the airport, and you um, go on a special tour for May Day, which is from today through, or today is May 1st, through May 7th. And I won't say any more about that because Nathan has not done that, but I thought it was fun. It was a little extra, and um, I thought that that was um, a fun little one of their holiday things that was just a little extra thing in the game that you don't normally get to do. Right. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. I, I didn't play very much today, so I'm not entirely sure what all it it is exactly, but um, yeah. Keep on. So let's go ahead and just, um, I mean, I've, obviously we've touched on some of the things a little bit, but things that we don't like about about this Animal Crossing. So why don't you start us off? Uh, the thing that came to my mind first was Bunny Day. <laughs> it's over yeah. now. It was like, I don't even know how long, two week period or something. It was so annoying. Like the first day. Hey, this is kind of cool. I get to collect eggs and I get to craft new things. And then there was like so many eggs. It was like an overabundance of eggs. And even when they fixed that to be less, it was still an overabundance of eggs. The bunny was creepy and annoying. And at the end of all of it, the reward for crafting every single DIY he gave you was stupid. <laughs> like I felt like I had, it was like a letdown to me. Like, okay, I did all of this. I did everything you wanted me to. And then, the reward was just a, another DIY for a bunny day wand that apparently you can store clothing in to have access to when you're going around your island. Okay. I was like, really? That was it? This whole thing? I, I did the work and it did not pay off for me and I was super annoyed by that. I'm hoping that their future holidays, like their big holidays that they do in the game, will be better than that one. Yeah, definitely the, the eggs were annoying. I probably didn't get annoyed about it quite as much, mostly because I didn't play as much during that time. But, yeah, there definitely were... I think, obviously, it was annoying. Um, after a while, I just gave up trying to get, get all the recipes. I just was like, you know, it's not worth my time. Yeah, it really wasn't, but I didn't know that. <laughs> well, I, and the thing is, is that sometimes, like, I, I'm... I can get into the holiday type events like I like I do in some of the things with Destiny, um, and you know, so I'll want to take the time to get all the triumphs in in that case, or you know, do all the recipes in this case. But this was one where I was just like, you know, this is just this doesn't feel worth my time at all. It's just it's a lot more tedious. Pretty much. I will so. say at the end of it, probably the thing that made it worth while than anything else was that um, I I had saved all of um, the things I made because I thought I had to give them to the bunny, and apparently I didn't. And I took the rest of the eggs and I crafted them into other stuff, and I sold them, and they did sell for quite a lot of bells. So I yeah. did make money at the end. But, That's true. Yeah. Um, that was like the only reward out of the whole thing, and it lasted for two weeks. It really should have just been like. I don't know, four day event, maybe maybe a week. If but yeah. it shouldn't have gone on for two weeks or however long it was. It went yeah. on for. But anyway, maybe it just felt like two weeks. I don't know because I want to say it started at the beginning of April and it went through Easter, which was the twelfth of April. But I mean, okay. I, I yeah, could you, I could be wrong. Right. I could be wrong. It just it was a long time. But anyway, you're probably right. That was that's the biggest thing I didn't like about this game. And I yeah, it was a short. Relatively speaking, it was a short period of time, but yeah. again, I'm hoping, like, now they're in uh, the May Day event, which is, like, super easy. You don't have to do it. It's, you know, it doesn't, you, you don't have to go out of your way to do anything. Yeah, and, and, and it rewards you. Yeah, it's not invasive. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. And it rewards you. You get extra miles and, and different stuff like that. And so it's so much better. Yeah. 
Um, real quick, just because it, it came to mind, and I don't know why I didn't think of this before, but something that we didn't talk about, actually two things, I just thought of another one, um, that was something that I, I like is the tool wheel. The tool, oh, the tool yes. ring, being yes. able to select different tools with the ring. And obviously we talked about this in our discussion after the Direct, uh, before the game came out, and um, I, I still wish that you didn't have to keep you didn't have to fill up slots in your, in, I mean, in your pockets. Um, yeah, exactly. I kind of thought tool. the tool wheel would um, take the place of them being in your pocket, and yeah. that's not the case. I mean, it's still a lot better than having to manually go oh, through and is. find the tool. It definitely or, is. Or, you know, having to press uh, left or right on the D-pad in order to select until you get to the right tool like you had to do, uh, which was the shortcut way of doing it before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's more one of those things where, in general, I think it just it's really helpful. It saves a lot of time and effort, and the fact that you can you know assign them to whichever slot you want. And so, if you want, you could have three fishing poles all in there. You know, if you just do a ton of fishing and your fishing poles are always breaking. Um, but yeah, I, I think it, I think it's a really nifty feature to have. Yeah. So. Speaking of tools breaking, it's starting to get a little annoying of yeah. how often they break, like, especially the ones I use the most, like, um, the shovel, the axe, and the fishing pole, I think are the three that I'm, um, having to make a lot with the net being a close, like, right after that. I know eventually you can make gold tools, but I don't know when that comes up. It's after you get Five Star Island. <sighs> That's annoying. Yeah. That's really annoying. Yeah. We'll get there eventually. <laughs> we just have to, have to, have to work on I guess bit. that gives me more of an incentive to work on a five-star island because I was like, hey, I got KK Slider at only three stars, which did surprise me. I thought it would have to be like four stars or more. And so my incentive for continuing to build up stars on my island kind of went down after that. Yeah. But yeah, it's especially like on days when I'm just trying to... Uh, um, earn a bunch of bells by doing a bunch of fishing or I'm trying to get a certain rare fish that's uh -huh. like going to be gone the end of that month. Right. And then I go through like three fishing poles in one game play. <laughs> or at least two. Yeah. It, that that gets a bit annoying. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of annoyance with that. I just I don't know. I wish, I wish that like it would be well, maybe, maybe I'll save this to talk about it when we when we get to the actual talking about things we want to improve. But um, I guess we'll let's just stick to the topic at hand: the dislikes. Um, oh, I had one. Oh, but actually, no, that's right. There was the other thing I want to talk about that I liked that we didn't mention, and that's the various um, reactions. Oh, okay. I yeah. don't use them a ton, mostly because of the fact that I'm. I'm rarely in a situation where I feel like there's a need to use them, but like one of the things I always liked in in uh, Destiny and Monster Hunter and things like that is emotes. Mm -hmm. And this is, I mean, it's not quite the same as emotes because you you can't like dance or anything, but but you know, it's still having the different reactions is is pretty fun. Yeah, I, I do like uh, collecting the different reactions. I really, I don't even think about using them until like. The few times that we've visited each other's islands, and then we'll go right. through the reactions. <laughs> but other than that, I just I don't even think of it. But I I am having fun collecting them. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, so going back to things that we don't like. Um, something that I'm honestly not sure if I'll like it in this game or not. Um, I just got the update where Red comes around with his art. Mm -hmm. I did not like it in the last game. I found it kind of annoying. He only came like once a week. And you'd have to go online and figure out which of his art that he was selling was um, authentic um, and which ones weren't. And then you had to buy it and then donate it to the museum. And I, I did not uh, finish that part of the museum because I just I didn't feel like doing it. Um, he's only just gotten there, so I'm honestly not sure if I'll have a different opinion in this game or not. I think I'm going to try to finish that part of the museum because this museum does look like so much cooler but I don't know if it'll be something that I'm just doing 
as a completionist or if it's something that I'll end up actually enjoying in this game. I'm sure it's going to be pretty much exactly the same as it was in New Leaf. Probably. So, so if you didn't enjoy it in New Leaf, you're probably not going to enjoy it here. Uh, personally, it never I never minded it, but... Um, yeah, obviously the fact that you have to, you know, go online and then, you know, find the the original painting to figure out where the mistake is, or, you know, if you happen to know what the mistake is, and that's a different story, but, um, yeah, I can understand that being a frustration. For me, I, I haven't even bought the first painting from him, so, because I couldn't remember if I was supposed to or not, and so I didn't, and he hasn't come back yet, so... But I think maybe he comes back tomorrow. Okay, yeah, I haven't I haven't looked up what day he comes. Um, I think I think what annoyed me more than anything else was that you have to buy the painting, but then you donate it to the, to the museum, of course, yeah. so you don't get anything off of it. And I mean, yeah, if you have like, yeah, you know, at least the last painting I bought from him was like I think four thousand bells. So it's not like a ton if you have like sixty thousand bells, but at the same time, it's like. I don't really want to spend that on art that I'm going to donate, but I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what I think about it this time around. Yeah. Um, speaking of red, that actually reminds me of other vendors and the uh, the little weird turnip <laughs> selling thing with the with the snot drip yes, coming she, out of its nose. Ugh, grosses um, me out. The turnip thing, I only just tried to start it last week, or this last Sunday, and I definitely can see how it has the potential to be a great way to earn money if you guess right on, you know, I mean, you know, if you happen to get a good sell price, or, you know, figure out what your best sell price is, that sort of thing. I, I think I, I mean, I could only buy, like... I can't remember how many how many it was. I didn't have a, I didn't have a ton of bells on me. I think I had like thirty thousand bells, and so I bought, and it was like ninety two bells per turnip, and I sold them for a hundred and eighty two, I think, per turnip. So I, I did make a profit, but um, I didn't buy enough to where it was something that I actually felt like it uh, it worked as well for me. Now I I have seen some people like. They've made millions of bells in a single time just from getting a really good turnip price, but I haven't quite gotten to that point yet. So. Yeah, I haven't been brave enough. Um, I think two weeks I bought 30 turnips because you have to buy them in increments of 10. Yeah. Last week I bought 40, and I don't remember what I bought them for. It was, I think... I think it was selling for 90-something mm -hmm. bells each, but I went on a day when they were being, where they were selling for 200-something bells each, nice. and I made a $6,000 or 6,000 bell profit. Only 6,000? Um, yeah, because I bought them for like 3,000-something bells, and... I sold them for like nine thousand something bells. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. I, yeah, so I made it for like some a reason six... I was thinking you you bought a lot more than that. No, I I, I only bought forty turnips. Okay. Um, because I I was still kind of playing it safe. So so that that doesn't make sense. So that should be should be more, right? You sure it wasn't sixty thousand? No. Um, no, it wasn't that much. But. Well. Uh, Anyway, um, but yeah, I, I, but I did make, it was a much better profit than I'd been making in the past, and, you know, so I'll probably, um, I guess be a little bit more risky. The main thing, of course, is finding the day that they're selling the bells for the most or close to it. Yeah. Um, and that's the tricky part, is if you go in on a day when they are selling, when they're buying bells for more than you, you bought turnips. them. turnips. Yeah, when they're buying turnips. For more than what you bought them for, but you know that they could go up from there, and so you say, "No, I'm not going to sell them today. I'll come back tomorrow," and hoping that it will still go up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, pretty much like the, it's their version uh, of the stock there, market. There is a uh, well, it's actually called the stock market. S T A L K. You know, I never saw that. I, my mind was still seeing it as stock market in, in the traditional yeah. spelling. That's funny. <laughs> 
What was it? Uh, what was the name? Uh, the traditional spelling. Oh, um, Brandy? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, not Randy, Brandy! <laughs> the traditional spelling. <laughs> uh, anyway. Welcome uh, to our lives. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, yeah, I, I, there's this, um, the site where you can input like the turnip prices that you've gotten in the because it because it's a different price in the morning than it is in the evening. I did see that. A.M. and P.M. I, I don't um, play enough to check twice a day. But um, you can input it in this site, and it kind of gives you an idea of when it's likely to be at its highest price. Um, if you you know do it for a couple of days or whatever. And, I mean, of course, if you see that it's, like, double or triple, it might be a good idea to just go ahead and sell, just take a chance well, on that. Well, definitely, but, yeah. Um, someone today in the Married to the Games Discord, I think, well, today or yesterday, something like that, they were, their turnips were going for, like, 600 bells. Oh, my goodness. And it's like, I wish I had ton that that would have been a massive i mean that's right that's it's six, probably one, more than six times and so i again one of those things that comes up very rarely because yeah the one that when i sold it and granted, i don't think the other two weeks i had checked every day even after i sold but this one was definitely the highest i had ever seen it again it was 200 something i think it was in the low 200s yeah. but um i was like yeah i'm definitely taking advantage of that because from the site i had looked at it looked like it did go above 200 bells yeah but it must be one of those again one of those very rare things that sometimes happens right yeah um when i ended up selling mine i think i mean like i said they were about double the value and the next morning i checked and they had gone down to like 60 bells yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> and you definitely don't want to sell on a saturday which of course is the last day to sell but they're always low on saturday yeah. it's kind of like oh i forgot to sell my turnips um and of course, they don't they don't keep after a week. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, and that that actually kind of goes into another thing that they they need to fix, or well, I guess maybe not need to fix, but it would be good if they would fix going forward. And that is making it so that there's a better way to store turnips. I, mean, I know you can't put them in storage, which yeah, is you can't really put them weird. In storage. So some people they they literally just fill a room with tur turnips. <laughs> they they buy as much as they can, fill up a room, and that's and that's where they have to keep them because they can't keep them in their pockets all the time. Yeah, I mean technically, if you if you bought enough and you were willing to to wait and just just do the stock market for that time frame, you probably could just keep them in your pockets all the time until it gets to a high enough price to where you feel like it's worth selling, but. Um, and that's probably what I would end up doing, because then I wouldn't have to play as much. I could just, you know, take a chance and sell it for as high as I can sell them. But, um, because I definitely like to get bells more quickly, since there's just not really a, a good way otherwise. I don't like the fact that, that this game, so far, has so few valuable, like, fish and bugs. Or, you know, they spawn so rarely that... It's very difficult to get enough of anything to where you actually make a decent profit, and so the stock market is the best way to make a lot quickly. And, you know, if I want to finish paying off my house, or if I want to build a bridge, or if I want to build a ramp, that sort of thing, I have to pay for it. Um, and, I mean, you know, you know, I have to pay the full amount before it'll get built, which I kind of wish it wasn't that way, but it makes sense. Anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've... I haven't done a whole lot in building ramps and bridges, mostly because I have been focusing on my house loan, and then I just haven't really done much in that. <laughs> I'm still hoping that as we get into, like, summer months and the bigger bugs start spawning, that yeah. maybe it'll be easier... Um, and then, of course, we'll get some sharks. Hopefully, they won't be as rare as some of the rare fish are now. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, um, I agree. It's like most of the stuff you get, I don't think, sells for a ton. And then sometimes you can catch something yeah. um, that, that sells for more. 
Um, or if you're, you know, out at night and you get a tarantula, or now today it'll be a scorpion. Those sell for like 8,000, but I think it's only like once a night that those show up, and those are, that's like after seven at night, I think. Yeah. So. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about that you, you don't like, or, um, you just want to move into things we should, that could improve? Uh, yeah, we can just go into things that can improve, which is or suggestions very, for very short improve. section for me because I just I couldn't I feel like there are more things there, and we've touched on a lot of the stuff that I yeah. either think could improve or I just feel like I haven't done enough with it to have a good opinion of it yet. Mm -hmm. um, the only other thing I have because the main thing were, were the mystery tours, and we've already talked about that 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 yeah. needs to improve. The only other thing that's just kind of an annoyance to me is. Um, Sometimes the loading screens take a long time. Yeah. I think the longest is like if I haven't saved and closed. And so like I pause the game, think I'd come back to it. And then it's like hours or the next day that I come back to it. And it seems like the loading time then takes a long time. But yeah, sometimes the loading time is just like, come on, did it get stuck? Is it frozen? Oh, no, it's still going. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know what causes it to be slow or if they can improve that, but that, that's... Yeah, it's probably just as catching up. Yeah, that might just be that. Particularly, you know, if you're going... Be because, you know, you were at one time when you stopped playing and then it's... Yeah, I mean, that's probably out. what it is. Um, <laughs> as I was thinking through it today of when it seemed to take the longest and I figured, oh, it's probably that it's catching up to real time. So it's more annoyance on my part than anything that really needs to change, I guess. I just need yeah. to be more patient. <laughs> um, the, we, we had talked a little bit about the tools before and, you know, them breaking frequently. The one thing that um, I, I saw this, I can't remember who suggested it, I, but I think it was one of the guys I follow on YouTube um, who showed a picture that someone else had, a mock-up someone else had come up with, which shows like a a meter on each of the tools like shows how close it is to breaking um, I think that could be really useful or if they were to take this a similar approach to what breath of the wild does oh yeah where you know the tool where the weapon kind of starts flashing a little bit when it's when it's getting close to breaking um, I think that they actually have something on the notification I can't remember what the notification says but there's some sort of like text notification that basically tells you that it's coming close to breaking it. And if they did something like that for tools, it would help a lot because then people could either go do the customization, which basically restores it to its original state, or they could um, make up a new tool to have a backup so that when the first one breaks, they have another one ready to go. That's something I think would be really nice, but um, that's probably the biggest thing. Um, apart from that, I, I would really like to start seeing um, a little more, well, mostly I just want to see variety in the mystery tours. Yeah. I, I don't like the fact that the islands are all basically, apart from maybe layout, are the same as your island. Yeah, exactly. I it's definitely just, would like to see variety there. Yeah, because it's, it's just not, there's no reason to go on those tours. It's like, unless you happen to get extremely lucky, you're basically wasting 2,000 miles to go on a mystery tour where you're going to get an island that has the same fruit you do. At best, might have a few rocks where you can where you can get some, you know, like ore or whatever, or I mean, some iron ore, um, maybe occasionally gold or whatever. But for the most part, it's just like, okay, there's really no reason to go on this. Whereas with Tortimer's Island, that was what I spent most of my time doing. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. There was. There was a lot of things you could do. You could just go around the island collecting things. Uh, they had um, specialty items you could buy. They could only buy there. You could go on those fun little um, like activity tours. Like yeah. you know, you go places and you have to, I think, um, like swim in the ocean and catch like a certain number of something yeah. in, a, in a time limit. Or uh, you played hide and seek with with some other participants and you had a time limit and, and that was a lot of fun. Um, yeah. I did, I did that a lot and there was just, um, there was more incentive to go there because it was very different from your own island. 
Um, yeah, they, I, I really think they need to uh, do an update where they just add something because, yeah, it's like really no incentive to go. Yeah. Um, sometimes I'll go thinking, hey, maybe this time I'll come across different fruit, and it never is. Yeah. Yeah, I just got to a point where, like, if I had the extra miles, I would typically just use them to buy some, some of those tickets that you can exchange for bells. And, I mean, of course, I kind of wish I had saved some of them if I had realized um, how little you can do with the terraforming stuff initially uh, without spending more miles to get additional stuff for that program or for that app um but yeah i just i find that the the mystery tours are so underwhelming because you just you don't really typically get anything different from what you already have and it just ends up being a waste of time yeah i mean like the only times i've ever found it to be legitimately helpful going on a mystery tour is when i i just had gotten all of the possible or or whatever from from my rocks and um, going on the mystery tour was the only way that I could get more. Exactly, that's basically been uh, the main reason for me as well. Do you have any other other thoughts? Uh, no, I think that was about it. Okay, so um, if you were going to give a score out of ten to Animal Crossing so far, what would your score be? I think I'd give it 7.5. I still really like the game and the things I do, the things I enjoy, I really enjoy. But yeah, there's definitely room for improvement and some annoyances and some things that haven't panned out quite the way I was hoping they would. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would probably, I would probably score it maybe an eight, and it might seem like. Like, that doesn't make sense, given some of the negative things I've had to say. But it's really just because of the fact that I know that there's still stuff that we haven't gotten yet. And it's like, I know that there are more things that are going to be there. And I still find the game enjoyable. I, like, every time I'm playing, almost always I just want to keep playing. You know, I, I keep wanting to do stuff. It's just more that occasionally I get a little annoyed and stop playing because of... The fact that I can't find any different bugs, or I can't find any different fish, and I'm just getting the same stuff over and over, and none of it's worth anything. Um, but apart from that, most of the other things are things I can kind of get get over. It's still a really beautiful game. Um, it's still something that I enjoy. The kids li love to watch it. Oh, yes, and, they do. Um, I'm teaching my boys uh, names of the different fish and bugs. Um, and they're having fun repeating that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I definitely feel like... I, 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 still, I still feel like it's a really solid game overall. It's just, I think that some things maybe will feel differently in six months once we get to a point that more stuff becomes available. And I, I still think that there are improvements that need to be made. But I, I think that, for me, a 7.5 is a little low of a score. Um, though I do understand why you would give it that that score. And uh, anyway, point is, is that overall it's a pretty solid game. We're both pretty happy with it. Um, and just hope that they can continue to improve it. And hopefully, as time goes on, they will. I mean, I'm sure that there's just plenty of things we haven't seen yet because of the time of year we're in and everything. Hopefully by the time we get to like summer and all that, we'll start getting a lot more valuable bugs and fish and hopefully they'll add the ability to dive and, you know, add the coffee shop and maybe start bringing in the Nintendo themed items, things like that. Yeah, so. and I'm still kind of hoping that since there is a pier on the island that someday uh, Captain will show up in his boat That'd at the great. pier, yeah. and that would just make my day. Yeah, that would be absolutely excellent. So, I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. Um, can't think of anything else. Alright, so, we'll just end it here. 
So until next time, this has been the Frozen Gamer along with Wifey. And we will talk to you later. Bye.